All right, we'll give this a go. I hope you enjoyed your last little video. It should have looked like this when we did a little review of high school chemistry. So on the last video, we reviewed um, things we've already covered in class. What is science study? Science study is the natural world of the physical universe. So if this slide does not look familiar to you, then you should go back and review the other video. Because what I'm going to do in this video is pick up where we left off. And so I believe in the last video we went through all this vocabulary and we ended up with the bus seat rule. And uh, yeah, this is my description. So um, to explain the bus seat rule, we need, of course, a bus. Yeah, one thing you'll learn as we go through the class is I'm not a real good artist. So anyway, let's say you are on a bus. So this would be the bus driver right here. And here you are. And you're seated on the bus. You're the only, you're the only person on the bus. Dump da dump da dump. The bus goes along and it makes a stop. And one person gets on the bus. And this strange kid, kid, this student you've never seen before, or it could be, not be a student, this person who is a stranger to you ignores all the open bus seats and they sit right next to you. Now, be honest. Would that creep you out a little bit? I'm guessing it would. I mean, it would me. So that's just sort of, you know, a general convention in our society. If there's lots of empty seats, you would take that. So let's erase this, right? Well, yay, that worked. All right, so we erase the stranger. All right, so now let's say you're riding along. There's still you, and there's one person in every bus seat. Do, 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 do. Now the bus stops, and a stranger gets on the bus, and they happen to plop down right next to you. Now in this scenario, that probably wouldn't freak you out at all, right? Um, because that's what happens on buses. Uh, strangers sit down right next to you. So this is my nice little metaphor for electron behavior. So my statement of the bus seat rule would be um, that electrons, when filling an energy level, tend to occupy their own bus seat. So electrons, when entering a new energy level or sublevel, tend to occupy their own bus seat and they only double up when they have to. Um, now, you might be thinking, all right, wait a minute, Professor Dillon, it's been a while since I've had high school chemistry, and there are no such things as bus seats in an atom. But you might remember from high school chemistry a word called an orbital. And an orbital is an area of 90% probability of finding an electron or an electron pair. So yeah, what I'm calling a bus seat is a metaphor for an orbital. And in fact, somebody just made the word orbital up. I, if I got there first, I would have called it a bus seat. Anyway, I hope, hopefully this metaphor is of value to you. So on we go. What we're going to go over now is how to build an atom. So the first thing you have to do to build an atom is determine Z, which I hope you remember is the atomic number. And for practice, we are going to draw an atom of oxygen, atomic symbol um, O. <laughs> so, there's two ways to determine Z. You, one way is to look it up on the periodic table, or I could just tell you. So the atomic number for oxygen is eight. So hopefully you remember that, that the atomic number determines the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So there we have, there's my nucleus with eight protons in there. Um, so we have no choice there. Um, if it's oxygen, it has to have eight protons. So the second step then is to add neutrons. Well, here you get to have a little bit of um, choice, I guess is the right word. All right, so for the lighter elements that we're going to study in biology, the number of neutrons is usually around the number of protons. So you could choose to put in eight neutrons, but you could also choose to put in nine neutrons or seven neutrons. It's totally up to you, but you can't go put in something like 22 neutrons. So when I do this in class, students tend to pick eight neutrons, so we'll do that. Eight neutrons and eight protons. All right, now we get to the heart of the matter. Now we're going to add electrons. All right, here you have no choice. The number of electrons has to, has to, has to equal the number of protons. And since we have eight protons, we're going to need eight electrons. And they always enter, they're always added according to these specific rules, if you want to call them that, okay? So in the first energy level, the first energy level holds up to two electrons, no more, no less. So since we need eight electrons, we'll put two in the first energy level. Now, an interesting thing about this first energy level, the whole energy level is one big bus seat. So it doesn't matter where you put those two electrons, they're sharing a bus seat. So we added two electrons. Now to get the eight, we have to add six more. And we're in luck because 
the second energy level holds up to eight electrons. So um, when we add the electrons, oh, here's what you need to know. The second energy level, the third energy level, assume there's four bus seats. So the first four electrons will occupy their first bus seat. One, their own bus seat. Two, three, four. Again, assume for the second and third energy levels, and that's as far as we're going to get in this class, uh, there's four bus seats. So you notice we have two electrons on the first shell, four on the second, that's six, but we need eight. So the next two electrons, they double up, and it doesn't matter where you double them up. Okay? And that, um, that's our drawing of oxygen. So now that we have oxygen drawn, I want to answer um, a few questions. Um, what is oxygen's atomic number? Well, hopefully you remember from just the last slide, the atomic number was eight because there are eight protons. So we can put atomic number eight. What's the atomic mass? Well, hopefully you remember the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So for this atom of oxygen, the atomic mass would be 16. Now, I don't want you looking at a periodic table and coming up with an average atomic mass. I just want you to put down the mass of your atom. Okay, now what about the number of valence electrons? All right, remember that the valence electrons are the electrons only in the outermost energy level. And you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we know there's six valence electrons. All right, final question. Is that atom happy? Is it stable? Well, remember the um, octet rule, an atom is most stable or happiest is what I like to say when it has eight valence electrons. So no, sadly, oxygen is not happy, it is not stable, in fact, it is very reactive. All right, so hopefully this is still sort of a quick and dirty review of high school chemistry. And now what I want you to do, a little pre-class assignment, is to draw an atom of phosphorus using the rules I just went over and an atom of hydrogen. And just so you don't have to look it up, the atomic number of phosphorus is 15, and the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, draw these out in your notes, and what you need to do is draw them on um, an index card with your name and section number and turn them into class um, on the next day of class. So after you've comp done that little mini exercise, uh, you can watch part two of this video. So I'll see you there.